the start of the, the edge was 1999, 2000, so that was the first year. And uh, I grew up in, uh, in Cremona, Dog Pound area. So uh, dad drove me into uh, school every day because he worked in town. And uh, we did that for grade seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Um, I ended up playing junior and a little bit drum heller and then ended up in uh, Vancouver for the rest of my kind of junior career. So um, you, you go to school while you're playing in the Western League and uh, and then come back here at the end. Uh, so I think grade 10, grade 11, I, I came back both those years. Uh, grade 12, I actually ended up graduating in Vancouver. Why did you initially, initially choose the edge back then? Was it obviously you're a hockey player so was it more so for the athletic side of things what was kind of the drawing the drawing point for you and your family to come here um you know uh, jim bertram um and jim and cindy bertram had a, a, a big influence on that so i was playing uh, uh summer hockey um, i think back then it was the foothills elite playing with dan when, when we were the dinosaurs dinosaurs start, before that but uh um i think they kind of introduced us to uh to the idea and, to Poe back then and you know growing up in a, in a small town of Cremona um, and and wanting to kind of per, pursue a, uh, a hockey kind of career or, or you know get better at hockey and, and combine athletics uh, uh, athletics and schooling together and, and uh, high-end schooling um, that's that was the reason why I think it was uh, probably not an easy thing for my parents to uh, to make work at the time, but uh, um, forever thankful for them making it work because it uh, it was a great time for me. What did you like the most about your time at Edge? Um, obviously, you have a lot of great memories, but what did you like about coming to a school like Edge at the time? Um, for for us, uh, way back grade seven time, we only had seven kids when we started, just seven seven guys and. Uh, um, what I liked most about it was the, was the family feel. Like you, you, uh, you actually felt like you had you know six brothers in class with you, it's the same teacher, and every single day. And it was just it was it was really a family feel and very uh, personable for for everything. Um, and then just the competitive spirit. So we always uh, all all seven of us just push each other to become better um, all the time. Uh, I I remember you know. Um, competing on tests with uh, with all the guys and like you were happiest if you got uh, the highest score in class whether that was a you'd be happier with a 75 if you beat everyone else um, and if you got a 96 and someone got a hundred you'd be mad right so it was one of those uh, one of those things where you're always just pushing yourselves to to be better and uh, just that competitive spirit on on the ice uh, off the ice in the classroom and you know, playing basketball, badminton, anything like that, just always trying to be better than, than the guy beside you. And it just, it makes you better as a person, so. Thinking back to the four years that you were here, what did you think about your overall experience and how did you like it? Uh, it was fantastic. I think, uh, you know, I, I was really lucky, really fortunate to uh, have done that, combine athletics and schooling together. Uh, um, you get a lot of, you know, exposure to the, uh, NCAA and I ended up going a different route but you learn about all that kind of stuff um, it's the it's the, the family that you met along the way the good connections uh, the friends that I still have to this day um, you know friends parents that you know have helped you out in your career throughout the way too and uh, so it was just it was a it was a uh, you know something to you know basically you know, tattoo on your arm type thing that was that was me it was that was the edge school where to go to school I went to the edge right and that's your family so that's uh, yeah it was it was fantastic sticks with you forever which is really cool um, is there a particular memory now this might be a tough one you uh, obviously we're gonna go over some of your memories of being here but is there a particular one that sticks out to you or a few memories where you think back and think oh like that really takes you back to your days when you're going to school at edge yeah there's 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 a, there a few for sure um, we had some some great trips. We went down to Boston and uh, and Minnesota to uh, tour tour the university. So we toured Harvard, Boston College, Boston University, Northeastern, and then uh, Minnesota University, of Minnesota, Mankato, um, Duluth, um, and maybe one other. And played some hockey while we were down there. Just those were those were great times. Um, you know, just just specific uh, instances at uh, at Edge. Uh, um, the one time was was the the bag skate that I think none of us will ever forget. I think we might have been in grade eight, so there might have been uh, 
there might have been 15, 16 of us, but we, we had a shed at Calgary Academy uh, where we kept all our equipment. And um, the rule was you kept that shed uh, clean, right? You get dropped off in the morning, drop your, your hockey equipment off in the shed, and you had to keep it clean. And, and we went through a little run where guys were just piling their stuff up and, and not, uh, not taking pride in, in keeping the, the, the shed clean. So um, it uh, got Mr. DeVoe's attention and he said, okay, it's a bag skate today. And we went down to Westside um, to skate, just our regular uh, skate that day. And, and there, was, there was no pucks. And uh, he said, basically line up. And we went from one end to the <laughs> other and back. And he says, that's one. He goes, now do it two times. We did it two times, he goes, now do it three times, so we did it three times. And we did that all the way up to 10, and we were just about dead, and he's screaming at us to uh, <laughs> to skate harder and harder. And finally, when we got to 10, and we got the 10 done all the way there and back, we're thinking, it's all over, thank God. And he goes, okay, now I'm not. So we had to go back <laughs> down to one. And like we're, we're, we're just saying, okay, just get through this. And now it's getting shorter, so we're feeling better. And finally, we get down to one. We actually had a fair amount of energy for one because uh, it was all done. But then he goes, okay, now we're going to do it backwards. So <laughs> now we skated backwards. And it was just a, uh, it was an epic bag skate that uh, I've never had in my career. But I, I'll bet that to all the guys in, uh, um, on the ice, they'll never forget that bag skate the one day. So that was a, that was a great memory. And we uh, did some leadership courses out at uh, Goldeye and Nordic, um, and some, some really good times out there as well. Sounds like you have some PTSD from that bag skate, eh? Like, <laughs> yeah. That sounds like the worst bag skate of all yeah. time. Yeah, there was, uh, there was, after all that, we actually did some battle drills, and there was a, someone got hurt too, and uh, I, I don't know if I can tell that story, but it was, a, <laughs> it was quite, the, quite the day for sure. Um, what advice would you have for, we just had graduation last week, maybe it's current advice for or advice for current students who want to make the most out of their experience at a place like Edge, or general advice for upcoming grads, what would you say to them? Um, uh, enjoy it uh, and, and keep your keep your connections close. Utilize your connections, right? Like, uh, you know, it's been uh, oh man, a lot of years since we graduated. I guess 17 years, um, almost. Um, and but to this day, um, a lot of the people from Edge are still in my life, so. Um, I would just say yeah, enjoy it, have fun, um, try to excel in everything you do, don't do anything uh, um, mediocre, do it, do it well and uh, yeah, utilize your, utilize your friends and keep them close because they, they might be in your, in your life 20 years down the road. If a prospective family or student was considering Edge as an option, what would you say to motivate them to come to a place like this? Um, I, I'd say you really got to want to do it, right? Don't, uh, if, you, if you're kind of halfway there, don't do it. But if you want to do it, if you, if you want uh, flexibility between sport and athletics, um, you want to excel at what you're doing, whether that be your sport or, or, uh, or schooling, um, it's, it's a good place. You know, the smaller class sizes, excellent teachers, um, uh, just walk through the facility here, just a spectacular facility right here. And uh, yeah, I'd say if you if you want to if you want to take a run at it and, and uh, you know really really uh, go to the next level, I think that's uh, it's something that uh, you should definitely consider doing. Last edge related question, but how did Edge prepare you for post secondary or for your career or just life after coming to school here? Um, it uh, it prepared me well, especially so. I uh, uh, my, my route was I uh, I went to the Western Hockey League and I didn't go the NCAA route. Um, and the, NC, the the Western Hockey League route is, is very much a uh, uh, a prep uh, prep uh, league for for the NHL. Right, as a seventy two game season and practicing every day. I I felt very prepared for the edge uh, for, for for the Western Hockey League uh, because because we're skating every day, so we did it every single day. Um, uh, Mr. DeVoe kind of preached, you know, uh, you, you know, you know, do do practice hard, practice right, like you're doing it, and and, and just kind of moved right into the Western Hockey League. So I was very prepped for that. Um, school was always important uh, for for us, for me at the Edge, and then uh, you know after after my my hockey career, um, I ended up going to school to Satan and to the University of Lethbridge, and. Uh, 
you know, even after, even if it was a lot of years after the edge, I, I, I felt very uh, prepared for schooling. So, um, and then, and then uh, that all transfers right into into your your job and your career. And uh, yeah, I like uh, I've never felt uh, felt like I wasn't ready for something. So every every kind of step along the way was uh, was a preparation type thing, and uh, the edge was paramount for that for sure. So you touched on it a bit. Tell me about life after it. So played in the dub. Went to school. Uh, tell me a little bit about what schooling was like, how your experience was playing the WHL, and what you've been up to. I know it's been a while since you left us, but just generally what you've been up to since you since you left the school. Yeah. So, well, I I was uh, played the majority of my uh, Western Hockey career for the Vancouver Giants, but a little bit for Red Deer Regina afterwards. Um, but. Uh, uh, spectacular time in, in Vancouver. We won a, we went to two Memorial Cups, uh, 06, 07, 07, 08, or something like that, and uh, lost the first one, won the second one in Vancouver in front of our home fans, and that's uh, that, that's probably one of the best moments of my life. Um, and uh, throughout that, was drafted to the Calgary Flames and uh, played. Uh, five contract years with, with Calgary, mostly in, in their farm team, their farm system. Um, that was in uh, um, Quad Cities, uh, Illinois, and then to Abbotsford, and I finished a little bit in, uh, in Phoenix and LA's farm systems as well. Um, great experience as well. Uh, everyone goes, what was it like, you know, playing professional hockey? And I said, well, it's, it's a job just like everything else. So it's a, a lot of time and place. It's a, it's a lot of grind. Um, at the same time, a lot of great experiences. I get to play all the way around uh, um, the U.S. and Canada. Met a lot of good people. Um, played with some great, great hockey players, fought some really tough guys. Uh, and it was, it, was, it was an awesome experience, but it's not as uh, glorious as you might think. I think it might get there if you're, if you're on a one-way NHL contract plane <laughs> and flying on the nice plane all the time and having the, having the nice lifestyle. But uh, it was, it's, a, it's a job just like anything else. Um, but, uh, it, you know, it, it was, uh, I wouldn't trade it for the world. It was, uh, it was awesome for me. Um, I was very lucky to have grown up in Calgary and gone to the edge and lots of connections. So when I uh, um, decided to kind of retire on my own accord in 2011, 2012, I met with a whole bunch of people, a lot of edge connections. And I said, you know, like, what am I going to do here after hockey? And, uh, and I had a lot of great advice and a lot of different, uh, you know, sectors of construction, agriculture, insurance, oil and gas, obviously. Um, and kind of, I felt I felt uh, super fortunate to have all these all these people trying to help me out, taking time to um, to, to listen to me in terms of what I want and uh, give advice or help out if they can. The, the Jim Bertrams, the Grant Fagerheims, the Bruce Stewarts all sat down with me and, and gave me great advice. Um, and uh, you know the, the the overwhelming advice was was go to school, right? And I had not done any post secondary schooling, so I ended up at uh, uh, SAIT um, uh, in a company in a, in a uh, program called Energy Asset Management, which is essentially the uh, business side of oil and gas. And uh, uh, learned a lot there in my two years. I was uh, fortunate to to get a summer job for. Um, uh, basically secure energy the first year and then for white cap resources in the second year I learned a little bit about the field and then I ended up uh, work, sell, selling service rigs right, right out after school after that so and that's essentially what I'm doing today is, is still selling ser service rigs so I started a company called Enzyme now I'm at uh, uh, Treeline Well Services um, which is which is my group now we just bought a rig yesterday so we're at 30 rigs we're the we're the largest uh, private service rig company in Canada so I'm uh, I'm a partner there and a day-to-day uh, -day look after the, the sales and marketing uh, group and uh, we, we wear a lot of hats in the company but uh, I work with a, a fantastic group of guys now um, learning about service rigs still every day even though it's been uh, been eight years and, and I, yeah, I just work my even my clients are, are great to work with so um, life is life is good for me on the on the career front and uh, I'm very happy where I'm at. How do you like your job? Yeah, it's, it's 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 fun. You know, I get to, everyone goes. You get to golf so much and, <laughs> and lunches and play hockey, and that's true. We do do a lot of that, um, 
but uh, you know, it's it's like anything else, right? It's uh, it's uh, you're you're going to the office in the morning, and you're competing, you're competing against other people, and you're trying to get your own rigs out the door. You're trying to make more money. You're trying to work for good customers, and you're trying to be safe. It's uh, so every day is a it's a it's a grind, but it's a it's a good grind. It's a fun grind. I uh, I work with a lot of like like I said, my my the clients I have. I I enjoy a lot of them I call good friends as well as clients and. Uh, yeah, I, I couldn't have uh, I couldn't have been luckier with a uh, with a career that uh, I, I kind of stepped into. So that's fantastic. I mean, when you were when you were younger, obviously when you kind you're playing hockey, you know you, you see that as an avenue. So when you retired finally from hockey, and obviously you love the career you're doing now, but did you see yourself doing what you're doing now, or was it? You know, obviously you said you got a lot of advice from people that you knew and, and tried to find that path, but did you see yourself ending up where you are now? Um, I'd say that uh, that moment um, uh, when you stop playing, um, like you say, after you've dedicated your whole life to, uh, to a hockey career, and uh, uh, I don't want to say fell short, but I guess you fell short and it, it, you didn't make it. Um, I could have tried to grind it out for years and years and still been playing today, but uh, um, you know, life happens to all of us. So, um, but that moment when you stop, uh, decide to stop playing and, and look for a new career, especially going to, to school. I think it was 27 years old when I went to school. Um, and uh, the kids that you're going to school with are, are one year out of high school, right? So it's uh, um, that's just that's a scary moment. Uh, it's not a it's not a comfortable feeling. My family was uh, so supportive of me. And uh, that helps out a lot. Uh, makes you feel like you're doing the right thing, but in the moment, it's it was it was a tough thing for me. And uh, to if you had, hadn't told me back then, uh, you know, you'd end up here today. Uh, I would have been uh, like, let's go. That probably would have had more fun. Sounds good. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, it just been a lot more comfortable. But uh, um, you you never know what's what's in store for you in the future. And uh, I don't know what's in store for me in ten years, right? So it's. It's it's a gamble, but uh, I think like anything, you just you go work hard. You you listen to smart people, um, and you, you you try to do it to the best of your ability and, and hope for the best. And for me, uh, so far it's worked out great. What do you do for fun? Any interesting hobbies that you have? Obviously, you mentioned you're an avid golfer. Uh, anything else that you uh, that you like to get up to? Uh, yeah, I played a lot. Played a lot of golf. Um, I'm still not very good at it, um, <laughs> but uh, one day, one day that might change. So uh, I'm, I'm a member out at Bears Paw. Um, I play a lot out there, and I'm playing a lot of uh, golf with clients as well. So that's a big thing. Um, my uh, my fiance get married in uh, in November here. Uh, she her family's got a place out in Windermere, so we uh, we jump in the, the vehicle after work on Friday and, and head out to the lake as much as we can. And there's a lot of golf up there too, but there's there's some boating and you know just sitting around the lake fishing around the campfires and um, that's kind of uh, the oasis, the fun spot is going out to her family family cabin out there and uh, I quite quite enjoy that. Nice place to spend the summer. Yeah. <laughs> on the boat's never a bad thing. Congratulations on the wedding. Thanks very much. I bet you guys are pretty excited like now that it looks like you're strict. Well, I mean, November's still a ways, but considering where it was, it yeah. looks like you might be able to have a normal wedding. Yeah, so well, I, I, I hope so. Uh, everything looks good now. We're doing it in California. My, my fiance is Madison Murray, so she's a former edge uh, student as well. So um, it, it was good for that part too. I didn't know Maddie when uh, when she went to the edge, but yeah. So we're excited, and yeah, I hope that uh, the world's back to getting back to normal here. We don't have any more uh, restrictions to come close to the wedding. No kidding. We're all thinking the same thing. Um, last one for you. Anything that people would be surprised to learn about you? A lot of people would be surprised to know that I, I grew up on a uh, on a, a farm. Uh, actually, uh, um, my uh, great grandfather settled here in 1904, so um, uh, we had a beautiful uh, ranch um, north of Cochrane, about 15, 20 minutes north of Cochrane, um, south of Carmona. And yeah, I grew up as a as a ranch kid, helping out there with my my dad, my grandpa, and. Uh, um, I, I think uh, my dad will call me a city sticker today, <laughs> this day, but uh, um, that was that was the, the roots, the, the dog pound uh, ranch out there, and uh, really, really lucky to have grown up in that. <laughs>